Hi guys, welcome back to uh, Fruitopia in uh, late winter. So this is part two guys of a two part video on um, the changes that are taking place now towards um, spring, which isn't too far away. Here you can see the Wurtz avocado, which is getting its uh, flower buds ready to pop that happens around November so yeah they do wait for quite a while they can wait for three or four months before they open so whilst we're waiting for the avocado to do its thing there's hundreds literally hundreds of other activities taking place now in August honestly it would take me a good two hours to um, fully document um, the changes in these videos rather than 30 minutes but I try to do um, try to do it as quickly as I can because I know most people don't want to watch a two-hour video or a one-hour video so I try to compress it these are the two words trees which I planted 15 years ago or actually 16 years ago here at the uh, Fruitopia there's um, one here and one there so that was back in 2004 that I purchased them and they went in the ground here around 2007 2008 yeah so they've been in the ground now for at least 13 years and they're doing really well but uh, not very much in the the fruit fruiting um, um, uh, um, what, what do you call it? fruiting <laughs> sense but as a tree and uh, it's grand but it only gives us about a dozen avocados a year it should be hundreds I'm not sure why but anyway let's move on right next to it we have a Fuyu persimmon which is also quite old it's been here for 12 years and um, it's well what can I say you've seen it in past videos and it's waking up yep it's time to wake up for spring and most trees wake up in winter not not in spring some wake up in spring but most of them wake up now in August which is uh, really early spring so I was hoping for some sun today but it wasn't to be so why am I so excited about spring guys the reason is well we've just had three months May June and July which are the um, the worst months here in Australia as far as um, climate here you can see the um, the, the giant bird of paradise already flowering it's already sent one flower out which I didn't even notice until yesterday so that must have happened like um, a week or two ago when we were gone beautiful and it's getting ready to send out another one right next to it look at that so very exciting very very exciting guys the black sapodies are starting to wake up as well as you can see here on the tips see that the tips and this is in ground this is not in the greenhouse heated right this is out in the open unprotected completely on its own okay oh and by the way we're in our sixth lockdown here in Melbourne which started um, a couple of days ago so yeah pretty much business as usual for us though because we mainly stay home we're homebodies but we do travel um, to get away so that breaks up the um, the spell of staying at home so it's a nice balance this is the gooseberry which I showed you in part one looks like there's another another one that's ready yay 
So am I worried about the lockdown? Not really. Mmm. A little sweeter than the previous one. So there's the in-ground black sapote, which I've had in the ground now there for about three or four years. It's doing really well. I wish there was sun today, but not to be. But it's a nice 16 Celsius, which is pretty good. And there's no wind, which is um, why I'm able to dress like this. <laughs> there's the wise owl, which um, is meant to be chasing the birds away from the fig tree. Oh my gosh. There's bananas growing on, on the fig tree. How's that possible? No one told me about that. Yeah, they're the bananas I picked um, last week. Already they ripened, see? Taking them off the, um, the plant, bringing them indoors, and voila, ready to eat. This is the uh, longan in ground. I've had that in there now for about two years, coming into its third year, and uh, still very slow. This is the Kohala variety. It's always um, having little shoots like this through winter, but they don't move. There's no movement for like a whole three, four months. Like they come in May or June, and then they pause until September. Yeah. So that's a lot of time that's lost. And the reason that happens is because of the temperatures. The temperatures are too low here for there to be any action from here. This year needs to see 20 Celsius before it starts to start dancing. Not 12, not 14, not 16. But the thing is, guys, we don't get 20 Celsius over winter like they do in Queensland. We don't have that luxury. 20 Celsius comes in September. We have to wait till September for 20. That means this lychee has to wait till September to get moving. There is, it's trying to move. It's trying to move down here. See that? See that down there? That there is the lychee saying, come on, where's 20 Celsius? Where's the 20 Celsius so I can get moving? It's waiting. These are little um, growth buds. It's waiting, guys. Meanwhile, in Perth and Sydney and Brisbane, they're exploding. They're taking off already in um, July and August. Not here, not till September. That's the difference between the climates. We're waiting, they ain't. All right, what's going on here, you might ask? <laughs> That's the, uh, the Hess avocado, guys. I had to bag up all the old avocados from last season because they're getting soft. Or well, softish, not soft to press, but soft enough for the birds to poke and we had two of them lost this week from the bird pokers so uh, I immediately came out and started to um, to bag them well as I said last season's avocados not next season this is rock hard they can't get in here no way but they can get into into this one if you push hard enough, your finger will go through. So that's why this change over the last week. As you can see, they're all pretty low, just right for reaching. And something else new, guys. 
is uh, over here with the um, kiwi vine. Did you notice how it's gone? It's not there anymore. What happened to the kiwi vine? Well, yesterday I removed all the all the growth on both sides. See that? All gone. So I left the um, the stump to see if it comes back next year with uh, fruit. Well, it would probably take two years, right? So it's going to be a waiting game. And the same with this side here. So there you go. Kiwi. Not giving me much fruit for the last five years. So I had to take action. Either remove all the growth or remove the, the plant. So I chose to remove the, this and um, give it another chance. If it doesn't give me abundant um, volumes of fruit, in three years I'll decide to pull out the actual plant. See how we go. And that's why I cut my little finger doing that job yesterday. It's part and parcel of gardening, guys. All right, here we have the pink guava with um, what looks like a guava that's ready to go. Nice. I think I'll take you for a ride. Oh, that came off so easily. I'm looking for the um, the other pink guava, the red. What's it called? Red Red Supreme, I think it's called. I'll try to get that one when Dailies has it. I'm hoping for a sweeter guava because this pink one, as nice as it is, it's not really sweet. So, mmm, tastes good. Mmm, it's some sunshine, but it's not sweet. It's a little sweet. Mmm, tastes good though. Very tropical. The good thing is that um, at the end of the season, which is August, September, they get a lot sweeter, which is great. I don't know what my neighbor's up to, but he's banging on the fence. Um, the early ones in June, July are pretty sour. Here I have a, a support for the banana, which decided to um, mature or open, I should say, in winter, which has never happened before. But uh, even though it should be bad news, you don't want banana blossoms in winter, guys, in a temperate climate. We're not in the tropics. So even though it should be a bad um, idea, uh, I'm quite surprised that the fingers are so big. I've never seen fingers, banana fingers, that big ever, whether it's winter or summer. Check out their size. I'm astonished. This blossom only opened three days ago. And the fingers are already six or seven inches long. Astonishing. That's unheard of. Well, at Fruitopia. Hmm. See what's going on here. Oh, I'm airing the um, the tropicals in the greenhouse, giving them a breather, which they haven't had for. A month, more than a month. They all got sea salt this morning, so they're pretty happy. And it's nice and warm in here. Wow, it's almost as warm as um, the Gold Coast. Let's look at the temperature. Oh, it's not as good. No, I'm very wrong actually. It was 23 in here when I opened the flap, 
and now because the flaps open it dropped down to 14 Wow yeah but it still feels warm it feels a lot warmer than 14 that's for sure Mexican lilies are starting to pop for the first time since I um, planted these out three years ago so it took three years for these lilies to finally flower wow that was a long wait so they must be really um, tropical I can see about four or five of them coming but it's nice nice to see these grow to like five feet high I removed a 14 year old dwarf nectarine from here yesterday and a 14 year old dwarf peach from there so I've got new a new new spots to plant some of those tropicals someday there they are there bye bye my focus guys is to go as tropical as I can and um, with with plants like this one here this is a wax jambu right not everyone's favorite it's a little bland but I like it I like the the juicy um, fresh taste in summer and uh, looks like it's made it really nice out here in the in the ground I planted this exactly 12 months ago so it's been in the ground now for one year unprotected no protection like I have for the jackfruit there and um, yeah I'm pretty wrapped the chompu longan in the ground has suffered some uh, cold damage over the last month July is the is the most brutal month here um, back in June it wasn't like this it was perky it was very happy but check it out I should have given it some protection I guess but the good news is guys it'll come back Longan is um, what do you call it it's not a sook <laughs> it's not a sook look look at that I can't say the same for the uh, star apple or the abu see the difference even though it got slammed by the cold look doesn't look good at all does it it's forgiving and that's what we want we want tropical trees that are forgiving look at that oh wow the Sun feels good now about time where have you been sunshine <laughs> come on bring it on bring it on for this long gun do it for the long gun There's more coal damage on the uh, cherry moya, which I've had here in the ground for seven years. Yeah, even after seven years, it can still cop brutal damage. Yep, seven winters it's gone through. And yet, look, it's still painful. For the cherry moya, which as you guys should know, is a cold tolerant um, anona. The one that's been the best champion of all though over winter has been this guy here. Do you guys recognize it? Look at it. Does that look like it suffered through winter? Not at all. Unlike the cherry moya here with its yellow leaves and damaged leaves. But that'll bounce back. Look at this guy, not one, not a single, not one damaged leaf other than the critters, right? What the critters are doing, nibble, 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 right? That doesn't matter though, because for every nibble, there's a new leaf that replaces it. See that? And there's millions of leaves that replace all the nibbled ones. Bring it on. 
we have some uh, pepinas that are ready too and we're going to enjoy this one for this uh, video and the only way it survived not because of the, nothing to do with the cold but because of the um, the critters that are biting into these so I found a new way to um, protect my pepinos and, it, and it's worked it's worked like 100% so now we just slip it off and we got our fruit how's that? nice there's another one back there as well but we'll just have this one today here we go mmm pepino melon it's a melon Mm. Sixteen Celsius or fifteen, whatever it is. Late winter. The Kunara is running in everyone's house, but we're having tropical fruit. A fruitopia. That's what it's all about, guys. This is dripping wet. Look at that. Dripping wet. Yeah, the um, the fruit fly has found these. Not now in winter, but come summer. The fruit fly gets them. So I've got a possum, I've got birds now in the fruit fly. But with these bags, that won't be a problem. Oh, I can't believe the sun's out. This is so cool. Ah, oh. oh my gosh, it feels so good. Yeah, it's a big deal when you've been um, three months in cloudy, cool weather. Well, we travelled, but uh, for everyone else here in Melbourne, especially with one lockdown after another, are you kidding me or what? This feels so amazing. And by the way, you can check out how amazing it feels on our other channel, Real Life Adventures, where I talk about the sun in almost every video. I wanted to show you guys also the, the change with the yellow jabuticaba which I put in the ground here last spring so almost a year ago seems to handle our winters okay I mean it's got a few um, leaves that have been damaged or well not really damaged but affected by the cold but um, look at this it's getting new leaves it's getting new leaves guys See this, the tip. The aphids, though, attack the uh, yellow jabuticaba. The aphids love these new tips. So, look. See already on this one. I'm gonna have to get to it, do something about it. Because last last year, remember, they decimated all the new leaves. And the dwarf black mulberry, which I planted last spring, is also coming to life with um, fruit. The first mulberries all along the uh, branches. This is just like a year old and already uh, doing its thing.
We still have a ton of ice cream beans to get through. Since we've been away, we've um, let, them, let them ripen and get uh, fatter, as you can see. So a lot, a lot of um, ice cream beans. Yep. So pretty much um, citrus, citrus, citrus for the remainder of the garden. Geez, I've never heard so much noise on the road. So much for a lockdown. Sounds like everyone's out there um, having car races. That's the uh, tangelo and the grapefruit. Lots and lots and lots coming. And yes, the Pinkerton has survived, guys. Good news. As you can see here, if you can see, hang on. I'm trying to get the focus. See the buds? Ready to open. So the wait is over. It has survived. Whatever was wrong with it, not sure what it was. But I'm, uh, I'm thrilled that I got my Pinkerton back. And it's going to give us four avocados too, real soon. I'm waiting for it to fill in now with new growth, which it didn't do last spring. So guys, sorry and not sorry for the long video, but there's so much to show. I've only shown you half of the garden or less than half and we're almost at half an hour. So there won't be a part three, but this is pretty much the gist of it, of how things are in, <clears throat> in late winter. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check part one, which is mainly the front yard. This is the backyard and uh, We'll see you from the next video. Oh, this is the loquat tree, which is going to have a bumper crop coming right up in uh, October, November. Bye, guys.